I've opened the session called Slices and Crossfades, and this contains the same library music that we were working with before. There's the second one that was hidden earlier. He's back on the timeline. And I used that same system I showed you before to calculate the tempo of the second piece, and that's 123 beats a minute. If I play that, you'll notice that this counter down here is called the big counter. So I can go here and type in bar three and play, and bar seven and play, and verify that I'm correct with my tempo calculation. It should start on a downbeat wherever I choose. And it does. So let's put this to work trying to chop up this piece. Right there at nine, in grid mode, I want to select this bar and Command E it. We'll name it Intro because it has a kind of a nice buildup. So I'm going to use my F1 key to switch to Shuffle. I'm going to option drag this to the beginning and let's have Command D three more of those. Kind of a nasty little edit there, isn't there? So let's use our smart tool and create a little bit of a crossfade on that one. And because I'm lazy, I'm going to delete this one and this one, and then select this and this and duplicate that. So is that faster than making a crossfade over here? I don't know, but at least they have the same crossfade now and it's not different from one to the next. Let's listen. Okay, and there's a little ugly crossfade there. Let's fix that. You can trim a crossfade. Actually, why don't I just redraw it? Okay, and then after hearing it, I think it really needed to be a little longer. Let's listen. And this would be nice with a crossfade too. Pro Tools sometimes does this. It says, we don't like what you chose here. Should we adjust the boundaries? Let's go ahead and see if it can do that, and then we'll listen. One more time. I don't like the crossfade there. I'd rather just hear the splice. Still not loving it. This might be a case where we want to just sort of fade down to nothing and see how that feels. Maybe just not quite nothing, just a little later than that. Some options there. You could just leave a space too. So there's some options for editing this piece on the grid. Let's say that at this point, we don't want this piece of music. We want this piece of music to happen there. So the way I would do that is to get out of shuffle mode and switch to grid mode. I could switch to slip mode and just get free range of motion and try and nail that edit right there. But let's let Pro Tools do the math for us. And we'll just slide over one bar, two bars, three bars, four bars, and now it's exactly on bar five. I could switch to the one bar grid, and then it just jumps a bar at a time. I had it in quarter notes, and I had to be a little more precise. This piece, we really don't want to hear right now. Let's mute it, Command M or Control M on a PC. We'll just mute that piece. Let's unsolo this. I'm not sure that creatively I love this as an intro to that, but technically that's how you can accomplish it. Another way to do this is not to splice the music, but to crossfade the music. For that, I'm going to choose a bar grid. I'm going to edit this, Command E it, make a clone of it, so Option or Alt and drag, and then fade this piece in. Notice how the fades actually jump to the grid too. There's a full one bar fade in, this is already fading out. Let's help it fade out sooner. I want to be on this side of the edit. Sometimes you just need to expand so that you can get the right tool. 
And so that, that's kind of a full bar fade out, and that's kind of a full bar fade in. And let's see how those work. This isn't a full bar because it's using that tempo. We have to be tricky here. I'm going to undo those edits and put this piece back together. I'm going to switch to 96 for a second because you remember that's the tempo that this piece is in. I'm going to jump it to the grid and then select my full bar, then edit, then make the clone, then switch back to 123. I'm doing this fast, but I think you're with me. And then slide all that to bar four, and then fade in this piece. Don't want the fade to be on the grid this time. Move to slip mode and make it that long. I actually may not want this piece to start quite that early, but let's find out. Let's listen. I could slide everything over a little bit to bar five so that this is a case where nudge works, but I'm pretty close. That's good enough. There's some options for splicing and crossfading music using the grid to try and get the pieces that you want to line up with the pieces from the other piece. There's an energy mismatch here. It's kind of a level mismatch. To try and fix that, I'm going to watch the output meters. So the first piece about there. It's just a slight mismatch, and I could fix that with the volume controls here. I could also put in a master fader and monitor that, but that's going to give me the same information I have here. That's kind of an extra step, but it is important when you're doing fades or splices to monitor the level change from one track to another. If there's no level change, you're done. But if you don't want an intensity or a level change, then that's how you get it. Set the volume of one higher than the other. Now, let's say we're done with this. We've got it creatively where we want it. Is this a consolidate or a bounce? Well, consolidate will give us these pieces together and these pieces together, and not one audio piece that transitions from these to those. So this is a case for a bounce. So file, bounce to disk, choose the type of file that you want. I actually want an interleaved stereo. And remember, a bounce is as long as you tell it to be or until it runs out of audio. Have we done our diligence here? Let's take a look. I'm going to cancel out of this and zoom. Turns out that the bounce would probably take us through this and then keep going because it thinks we want this piece back here. If we don't want that piece back there, we have to tell the bounce how long to be. And that's the way I always do it. I start where I want it to end, and then I take it to the beginning. Same reason that I click right to left when I'm selecting a clip near the beginning of the timeline. I want to be sure that I get all the way to the end. It's harder to click over here and drag to the right. So start where you want it to end, and then take it to the beginning. Now we're ready to bounce. Let's change this back to interleave. We choose where we want it. Let's do an offline bounce, and it's put it in the bounce files for this session, and I think we can call it a day. The fade tool and the crossfade tool are handy parts of the smart tool in Pro Tools, but there are ways to customize fades and crossfades, and we'll look at that in the next movie.